For almost a century, Arabs and Jews have fought for control of the Holy Land. Jerusalem is sacred to all three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And here, politics and religion are profoundly linked. All three religions associate the city with their core beliefs. So how do those who live here cope with this tense situation? For Christians, Jerusalem is the city where Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is built on the site where these events are believed to have happened. For Jews, Jerusalem is the holy city that God has given them. The Western Wall is all that remains of the Second Temple, destroyed by the Romans almost 2,000 years ago. Where the temple once stood, Al-Aqsa Mosque now rises into the heavens. After Mecca and Medina, this site in Jerusalem is the holiest in Islam. The Dome of the Rock is built on the spot where Muhammad is believed to have ascended into heaven. In the Old City, which covers less than one square kilometer, the three religions live side by side in clearly defined districts. All three view Abraham as their father, and they all believe in the same God. But there are differences. There's also the political dimension. In 1967, Israel occupied East Jerusalem. And it's here that a mountain of contention lies, the elevation that the Jews call Temple Mount and Muslims Al-Haram Al-Sharif. We are struggling and politically to run our boat and to get the most uh, validity from all the different countries, Europeans, America, etc. Because we have the Arabs nations against us, we, but we know, so we always feel it and we always have uh, our uh, finger on uh, Pulse. The Jewish state is trying to have all the cake for their own self, their, their self. This is difficult, this might make some wars. The Saeeds are Arabs and devout Muslims. Today, the women of the family are going together to pray at the nearby Dome of the Rock. Hanan is the eldest of the three girls. Their father, Yasin, considers it his duty to bring up his daughters according to the Quran. Arabs call it Al-Haram Al-Sharif, the noble sanctuary, and that's exactly what it is to the Saeeds. From an early age, the children have been introduced to the religion of their parents in this sacred place. This is where the Prophet Muhammad is believed to have ascended into heaven on a winged horse to receive Allah's commandments in what Muslims refer to as his night journey. After prayers, the family goes out into the old city. Yasin works here in a restaurant. 
Freshly squeezed pomegranate juice is on sale all over Jerusalem. For the girls, it's a nice treat before they meet their father and accompany him on his way home from work. Here in Jerusalem's Muslim quarter, the cry of the muezzin calling the faithful to prayer echoes through the narrow alleys five times a day. Yasin is a devout Muslim. Even though he doesn't pray five times a day, he has a strong connection to his religion. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I say, Ya Allah, in the way of God. So never mind which direction I, I choose, but I say in the name of God, I, I beginning my day. At the other end of the old city on Mount Zion live the Goldsteins, an Orthodox Jewish family. <laughs> Before the evening meal, the girls, Zaha, Ronya, Raquel, Rivka, and Esther, have time to play. The boys, Moshe and Shlomo, help their mother, Shoshana, in the kitchen. Their father, Rabbi Goldstein, has just arrived home. Being able to live here with his family is very important to him. I live here in Mount Zion. As God prophesies, the Jews will come back to Mount Zion and we back. And this is part of the gift of God, created the world, and he promised in his Bible to give it back to the Jews. And those uh, promises have been fulfilled. Basically, um, the people in this area, most of them are very religious, and their religion is uh, its um, core of the existence. It's a primary in the life is their religion. And the only way that the people here live is because people have the necessity to live. And part of living is they have to, they have to relate to one another in business and different relationships which requires uh, life. And therefore, in those aspects, they relate to each other with respect and with the cover of honor and peace. But when it comes to the point of when religion is a conflict with life, uh, because I want to protest or say a statement in different situations or different timings. So then the same person, which is your friend or your worker or your boss, it can be a totally different person and it can come to the level of violence and even to the level of killing. The culture here, the Middle East culture is not where you come from. It's a total different culture, totally different culture. Uh, religion is a primary, honor is primary, values. You come from the world of the Western world, which is uh, physical and there's more wealth. So, so people talk about love and care. But when you come from more of a survival society, the values are honor, religion. It's a total different world here. Zara describes that world. To obey God's commandments, share with others, help my mother, and make God happy. In synagogue, there are Torah readings on three days of the week, on the Sabbath, on Monday, and on Thursday. The service begins early in the morning. According to Orthodox tradition, at least 10 males over the age of 13 must be present. A Jewish boy is considered spiritually mature at 13. 
A new section of the Torah is read out each week, so that the first five books of the Bible, the Law of Moses, are read each year in their entirety. The women are separated from the men and participate silently. What does Rabbi Goldstein think is the essence of religion? I would say a few things, a few steps. Number one is, the Jewish religion is built on a very, very strong foundation. The Bible claims that a few million Jews saw God and stayed alive and continue on to testify it. That's there's something very powerful that nobody can deny. Rabbi Goldstein also believes that all God's prophecies have been fulfilled so far. This proves that the scriptures are true, he says, and that God has chosen the Jewish people. What would he say if one of his children wanted to marry someone from another religion? My first reaction will be, if I see if it's serious, I will try to convince the other spouse to become Jewish, to accept the Jewish religion. And my second thought will be that if, for example, if it's my daughter, according to the Jewish religion, if uh, uh, the mother is Jewish and the father is not Jewish, the children are still Jewish. So I will focus very much to keep the relationship with the, with the husband because my goal will be his children, because his children are still Jewish. You have to understand that by Jewish religious people, we train kids from a very young age the Jewish values. Back to the Muslim quarter. How are the Sayyids bringing up their children? Their daughters mean everything to them. What do they want to pass on to them? To be a human how to be a human, how to, to grow up in good, with good and enough experience in life. Hanan is 13 and Doha 11. The elder sister already knows what she wants to do when she grows up. To go to university. Become a lawyer. With regard to their daughter's education, the Saeeds are very modern and open-minded. At school, the children come into contact with other religions. This young, open-minded generation may hold the key to better relations between the communities. However, reconciliation would hardly be possible without the religious leaders also wanting it. And that is not always the case. In a small mosque in the old city, Imam Hajj Rabia al Bakri makes ready to say his prayers. How would he describe his religion to an outsider? Islam to surrender for God. Moses' message was until the time of Jesus. When Jesus came, the, the message of Moses is end. We have no more a religion of Moses. We have to believe in Jesus. Now, every human being believes in the message of Jesus until the prophet Muhammad came. When the prophet Muhammad came, he came with the Quran. The Quran, collect all the messages which has been before by Moses and by Jesus. So after Muhammad والسلام, everybody should believe in the message of Muhammad, which is the Quran. However, there are various interpretations of the sacred writings. Yasin's wife comes from Jordan. His relatives arranged the marriage. Islam rejects the notion that the Jews are God's chosen people. 
It views the Christian notion of a Trinitarian God as blasphemous. Nevertheless, Yasin gets along well with Jews and Christians. But what would he say if one of his daughters wanted to marry someone from another faith? I will say no. Either he come Muslim or no. It's not allowed in our religious. How did Christians live in the old city? Close to the seventh station of the cross, on the border between the Muslim and Christian quarters, lived the Shahadas. The father is a cook and treats his family to his culinary skills. Today, there's lamb with almonds on the menu. The Shahadas are Arabs and devout Christians. Only Christians live in this apartment building, although it's in the Muslim quarter. The Shahadi's flat looks out onto the colorful alleys of the bazaar. Ruti Shahadi is a nurse at a children's hospital. Today she has a night shift, but that doesn't bother her. I love my job. In a few words, that's really I love my job. I don't mind who they are, what they are. You know, in the hospital, there are plenty Muslim, Christian, Jewish, even other religious, and I take care as, as nursing said, for everybody's the same. The residents of Jerusalem are generally helpful and respectful towards each other. But when it comes to religion, tensions suddenly surface. Some people even get angry about their own religion. Every story had, uh, had a mission, every story had something that we have to say, a light that we have to, say, to see in how great Jesus is. I can't say there's a special part, you know. But what I don't like, what I don't like in Jesus' story, that when he tell the, when somebody hit you on your left, turn him on your la, uh, right, so our face will be like a fan, you know? This way and that way. <laughs> Sorry to tell. You know, the Jewish from one part and the Israel the level. <laughs> I'm really sorry. The most difficult thing to love is your enemy. But uh, like what Jesus said, that you have to love your enemy. But it's very different, for, uh, difficult for us because we are occupied and we have a lot of enemies. So we are tra trying to love our enemies as much as we can. Elvira wants to go to university and become a chemist. However, in a city like Jerusalem, where even children are drawn into political and religious tensions. She's anxious about her future. Now I'm living my life, but in the future, what will happen? If we have a lot of fights with the other religion, like how we will live in a lot of places with killing, how we, live, we will live happy, how will God tell us like, to live happy, and we have a lot of fighting, a lot of uh, things coming through us, like. I hope in the future it will be more better than what I think, like what is today. It will be really hard for them, really, really hard. For example, I will not, I will not allow my daughter, now she's 17, she will get married years later, I don't know when, but I will not expect to, to marry another religion. Looking east from Jerusalem, you can see the seven-meter-high wall that Israel has built to enclose the Palestinian territories. Those territories include the West Bank and part of the Judean desert. In the Six-Day War of 1967, Israel occupied East Jerusalem and the West Bank, as well as Gaza. The Palestinians want to see the pre-1967 borders reinstated and the recognition of an autonomous Palestinian state. 
This political conflict is inseparable from the diversity of peoples and their centuries-old religious conflicts. Father Joseph Sagbini sees little progress. Sadly, religions are sometimes a source of division in the Middle East, rather than a basis for living together. Among the people of the Middle East, religious feelings are the most sensitive. So they can easily be played upon and manipulated. Sometimes we suffer from the fanatical Orthodox Jews, as well as from fanatical Muslims. But the political question is the most important. What will the Israelis trade for peace? Will they give up East Jerusalem? Will they return Palestine to its pre-1967 borders? Everybody has their rights. We are all humans. God's creation. That's the Christian view. When we in the church talk with others, it's about peace, about the rights of both nations, the Jewish people and the Palestinian people. Both have rights. The reality that we experience is that peace is a long way off. A model for how diverse cultures and religions can coexist peacefully is the little village of Neve Shalom Wahad al Salam, midway between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. The name is a combination of Hebrew and Arabic and means oasis of peace. Evi Guggenheim, a Swiss Jew, met the Palestinian Muslim Ayaz Shbeta at an intercultural workshop here in 1980. Eight years later, they married, and they have made Neve Shalom Wahad al Salam their home. Founded by the French priest Bruno Oussard in 1967, the spiritual center at Neve Shalom Wahad al Salam welcomes both Arabs and Jews. People from various cultures and religious backgrounds meet up here in an effort to understand each other. In the School of Peace, we've observed encounters between people that give me some hope in this dead end situation. I think the feeling towards the others, all the negative attitudes, all the what we call the fundamentalism, it's not belong to religion. It's belong to the psychological, social attitude of the person. We use our religions to be uh, fundamentalist. We are not, not the religion uh, speaking. The main concept of all religions, and especially the uh, three monotheistic religions, it's based on peace. There's a place on the village slopes where everyone is welcome to pray in silence or to meditate. The name of this building is Dumia Sakina. Dumia in Hebrew, Sakina in Arabic, it means deep silence. Silence is the common language of all religions because God's word abides in silence. You know, uh, when I see Jerusalem, it's part of paradise. Jerusalem, it's part of paradise. When it will be, inshallah, peace, the people will have paradise over here. Jerusalem, that's house of God. So house of God will accept everybody. Jerusalem has a unique symbolic significance, politically and religiously and can't really be compared with any other place on earth. 3,000 years ago, King Solomon built the first Jewish temple here. 
as the city of the temple, Jerusalem became the center of the Jewish faith. But since then, it has been subject to various cultural and religious influences. The claims of individual groups that the city belonged to them alone have repeatedly been the cause of war. In spite of all the failed roadmaps and diplomatic initiatives, the conflicting parties say they want peace. And there is a real possibility they could achieve it. But for that to happen, two nations and three religions would have to become reconciled. <laughs>